2003's Hulk is a terrible movie. I'm sure you've heard that phrase at least once in your life. People have criticized the crazy editing, the convoluted story, and some of the more dated parts. It's been years since I've seen this movie because I always thought it would be a waste of time to rewatch it. But I've noticed a change. Now that the MCU has taken a turn for the worse. What the hell is even- People are starting to look back and rewatch these old Marvel movies. Movies like Daredevil, Punisher, and Hulk are more relevant now than they have ever been. And when I saw someone on Twitter call Hulk an almost perfect movie, I knew I had to watch it again. And I'm gonna have to use this border to prevent any copyright issues. The movie begins with opening credits of the Hulk's dad doing some science stuff. He's poking jellyfish, he's dismembering starfish, he's gassing the monkeys. Rest in peace. He sticks himself with some science juice and in some of the craziest transitions I have ever seen. <laughs> Crazy ass transition. Bruce Banner is born. His dad makes a full transition from scientist to mad scientist and starts experimenting on his son and killing his wife and nuking a federal base. Tactical nuke incoming! Transition to modern day and Bruce is now a man who shaves and wears a dumb helmet. You're implying something about my helmet? You look like a friggin' like dork. Nice. We meet Betty Ross, Bruce's past girlfriend and modern day lab partner. They do science stuff on Freddy the Frog, who is gonna be just okay. No, Freddy! Oh! I don't think Freddy made it. We are then introduced to Talbot in one of the most insane looking shots I have ever seen. I don't even know what I'm looking at here. What? And then we meet General Thunderbolt Ross, played by Sam, coolest voice in the West, Elliot. I don't think he's as good in this role as William Hurt was, but he's still a very welcome addition. We get some backstory between Bruce and Betty and what, what, what the hell? Why is this photo moving like they do in Harry Potter? I, I don't. We find out Betty was also there when Bruce's dad nuked the federal base, and there's some weird metaphorical dream thing happening where adult Bruce picks up baby Betty and starts spinning in a circle. What is this? Bruce goes home and has some dreams about rocks or something. I don't know. He wakes up to find the janitor from his lab standing outside of his house. He looks away for a second and they instantly vanish. Yeah, I'm sure that's fine. Better just go back to bed. The janitor goes back home and does some sketchy science stuff. But wait. Bruce's dad also did sketchy science stuff. Could it be that this is Bruce's father who doesn't have a real name? Identify yourself! Who the f*** are you? The next day is when this movie finally gets going. Something goes wrong with the gamma radiation reactor, and to save the life of this dummy, Bruce jumps right in front of the gamma rays and we get some really early 2000s effects. how it feels to chew five gum. Bruce wakes up and says he's fine, but he's not actually fine. He's dreaming of lizards and flying jellyfish and giant green men who live in closets. And he wakes up to find the most terrifying sleep paralysis demon I have ever seen, Nick Nolte. He's like, I'm your dad. And Bruce is like, <laughs> Bruce has PTSD flashbacks and gets real mad. Yeah. And he finally turns it to the Hulk. And this scene is incredible. He's tearing up the walls, he's ripping out desks, he's falling down. I know this movie has its haters, but I mean, come on, this is cool. One of the cool things about this movie is how it treats the Hulk like a big baby who slowly grows up over the course of the movie. It's an interesting way to give the Hulk some characterization. Anyway, watch this throw. <laughs> Hulk finds his dad, and there's a weird interaction where Nick Nolte caresses the Hulk's lips. Yo, why are you touching his lips for, bro? Freaking weirdo, man. And he also unlocks the Hulk's repressed memories, causing him to flee. The next morning, Bruce wakes up, eats some chicken like he's the hound, and explains to Betty how he really doesn't know what happened last night. But that's when General Ross and the federal government burst into Bruce's house and place him under house arrest. Ross tells Bruce to stay away from Betty, and he tells Betty to stay away from Bruce. So Betty searches for a way to help him by talking to his dad. She doesn't get very many answers out of him, but he gets really creepy and steals her scarf. Meanwhile, Ross is interrogating Bruce about his father and what happened at that lab, and he finds out that Bruce truthfully doesn't know anything because of his repressed memories, and because Bruce was like four. And this childhood trauma story element I think separates this version of the Hulk from any other version of the character. They treat the story with the seriousness that it deserves, and there isn't any character trying to minimize Bruce's past in the terrible things he went through. Later that night, Nick Nolte gives Betty's scarf to the mutant dogs, and he calls Bruce. 
Hello, Mario. He tells Bruce that Betty is in danger, but before Bruce can leave to help her, Talbot shows up. Talbot hits Bruce, throws him on the floor, makes him a little upset. You're making me angry. My bad, he's actually angry. Bruce turns into the Hulk and kicks Talbot off the front porch, which looks kinda goofy. Another quirk this movie has is his adaptation of the angrier the Hulk gets, the stronger he gets. Instead of just getting stronger, he gets physically bigger and taller to the point where he's just a straight up giant. I mean, look at him. The mental image of the Hulk wearing socks freaks me out a bit. I don't know why. He looks like he's trying to sell me some vegetables. And for whatever reason, Betty is just okay with this. She is not at all worried that this monster might eat her. He's going to eat you, and you are letting it happen. Are you sure you're a scientist? But the Hulk hears those mutant dogs coming, so he places Betty in the car. And now it's fight time. And this fight is freaking brutal. He punches these dogs, he throws them against trees. You feel every hit and impact in this fight. And it gets even crazier. One of the dogs starts chewing on his nuts. And so in retaliation, the Hulk picks up another dog and full force punches it in the sack. A lot of people might think that's goofy, but I, I don't know. I kind of love it. The fight ends when the Hulk kills these dogs so hard they turn into fart clouds. And as the Hulk turns back into Banner, we are treated to his cheeks. And this would not be the last time digital artists were forced to animate this guy's butt. The next morning, Bruce is back to normal and Betty rats him out to her dad. Five minutes later, they dart him and he falls asleep in a very Looney Tunes-like fashion. That's all, folks. He wakes up in a military base that kind of looks like a theme park ride. It's got the Mario pipes and everything. <laughs> Betty takes him on a little swing date as they try to unearth some of Bruce's repressed memories, but it doesn't work. Meanwhile, the father is doing some experiments on himself with Bruce's blood. He rips a bong and now he's the absorbing man. For the longest time, I really hated this adaptation of one of my favorite Marvel villains, but it's grown on me. I love the body horror elements of the goopy blood and the hand phasing through the piece of metal. It's really cool. And if you're gonna be inaccurate, you might as well be cool while you do it, unlike some other movies. We pick back up with Bruce in his cell. Talbot walks in and is all like, wow, money. I don't know, this guy sucks. He knocks Bruce out and Bruce wakes up in a back to tank. Now, the next stretch of events don't really make complete sense. While Bruce is taking a little swim, Betty goes home where Nick Nolte is waiting for her and he gives her and the audience, some exposition on what happened in the past. He explains that on the day he nuked the federal base, he accidentally killed his wife. And I think getting this revelation at this point in the story makes sense. However, we're led to believe that somehow Bruce is psychically hearing Nick Nolte tell this story because while he's in the tank, he starts to see flashes of his dad killing his mom and he turns into the Hulk. It doesn't really make sense, but it needs to happen to move the story along. So whatever, the Hulk is out now and we get a pretty cool escape sequence. And this is where they take that comic book aesthetic up a whole new level. We get multiple panel shots, split screens, all the good wacky stuff that makes this movie special. And we also get this gem. <laughs> Oh, that's so goofy, but I love it. The MCU could never. The Hulk flees the base and starts hopping around the desert. Bro just looks so peaceful, man. But he runs into some total tanks. It's coming! And he tears through these tanks, man. It's brutal. He also accidentally smacks himself in the nuts. Yeah! <laughs> he hit himself in the balls. Why are there so many nut jokes in this movie? But really, him using a tank to smack another tank is forever iconic. A little bit later, Hulk faces off against Ross and these helicopters. I do think this military chasing goes a bit too long, but there's some fun moments like the Hulk spitting the bomb on this chopper. And he also turns into Sonic for a moment when he's running through these canyons. <laughs> Hulk makes it to the Golden Gate Bridge where he fights the next class of military firepower, fighter jets. He hitches a ride and the jet takes the Hulk all the way to the atmosphere. And we get one of the scariest shots of the Hulk in the whole movie. He's out of my envelope. Oh, that's, a, that's terrifying. <laughs> he falls back to the ground and now is in San Francisco. But before he can completely destroy the city, Betty shows up and the Hulk's rampage comes to an end. Later that night, the military takes Bruce and his father to this machine to hopefully cure Bruce. And we get a confrontation between these two men that is fantastic. The scene starts with them talking about Bruce's mom. Bruce starts to break down and cry, but the father doesn't show any emotion. No grief, no guilt, nothing. 
He tries to do the fatherly thing and comfort Bruce, but when he's pushed away, he immediately drops the act. He doesn't care about Bruce. He doesn't even really care about his wife. He only cares about his work, his creation, the Hulk. I came here to see my son. The father is one of the most fully realized villains in any Marvel movie. You understand his motivations, you see what drives him, but he is pure evil. And Nick Nolte gives a fantastic performance in this role. One of the highlights of the movie for sure. The military turns on this machine and the father bites into the cords like the cat in Christmas Vacation. Bruce transforms and now we have our final fight, Hulk vs. Absorbing Man. I have spoken. The fight starts in the clouds and this is some of the coolest stuff I have ever seen in a Marvel movie. This is freaking awesome! The lightning cracks where we see these characters fight is so creative. I don't know how else to describe it. it. It's just incredible. They land by the lake and the father turns into Korg. Hey, 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 take it easy, man. They fight for a bit until Hulk tosses his dad into the lake and he hustles into the water for round three. After looking at the liquid image of his dad, the Hulk is dragged down into the depths. But instead of fighting his dad, the Hulk decides to give up the power. And in one of the hardest shots of the whole movie, Hulk overloads his dad with the gamma power destroying him and as bruce floats in the water he now remembers the one good memory he has of his dad one year later we see betty talking with general ross neither of them have seen bruce and they hope they never do but we get to see bruce in south america giving medical aid to the locals and when some of the bad guys come to cause trouble bruce delivers the iconic line <laughs> and the credits roll. This movie is obviously not perfect. The comic book panel aesthetic is sometimes jarring and very distracting, and sometimes the movie can drag in places, especially when the Hulk escapes the military base and fights three different levels of military vehicles. And as I mentioned, there are some narrative issues. Bruce getting that exposition of his mom's death in a tank doesn't make a ton of sense. And Talbot is really only here to move the plot forward. He only exists to turn Bruce into the Hulk, or to put Bruce in a tank, or to give us the best part of the movie. Ah! I could keep going with all the nitpicks I have about this movie, but none of it really matters. The passion and creativity on screen overpowers any complaint I could have. I saw some of the behind the scenes material and you could just feel how passionate Ang Lee was. He was so stoked to make this movie. I mean, he actually played the Hulk. He was so particular, so excited for this movie that he put the motion capture suit on himself it became the Hulk because in his own words, I don't think we have that much time. So the quickest way to do it is me putting on a suit instead of directing someone. I mean, that's just awesome. It's a lot of fun watching him beat the crap out of foam blocks and invisible tanks. And it works too. The way the Hulk moves looks very realistic and it makes the action scenes with CGI models also feel realistic. And even besides the Hulk, Angley's touch is all over this movie. I know I ragged on the comic book shots and while they are sort of goofy, I have to commend his commitment to using them in the movie. And sometimes they work really well. This shot in the film's opening with Bruce's mom and dad is excellent. The mom just told the dad that she's pregnant. And while it looks like they're looking at each other, they're not. There's a divide between them. The mom is excited to have a kid and to be a mom. But the dad is excited to have another test subject. And there's a lot of other really cool small details in this movie when you stop and think about them. And this cast is phenomenal. Especially Eric Bana and Nick Nolte. And also Sam Elliott. Although I'm not going to talk about Sam Elliott that much because he's much more well known for another Marvel movie that I might talk about in the future. So subscribe if you want to see that. Nick Nolte looks insane pretty much all the time. So him in this mad scientist role works really well. Something about him huffing chemicals and chewing on wires just seems natural. And Eric Bana. Oh, Eric Bana. He is for sure my favorite Bruce Banner actor. In the beginning, he really captures Bruce's quietness and awkwardness. I mean, Look how he's standing. He just looks like a dork. And as the movie progresses, we get to see his brokenness and his pain, and Banna acts out those scenes very well. Some prefer Edward Norton, some prefer Mark Ruffalo. But from now on, Eric Banna will always be my Bruce Banner. 2023 has been a rough year for Marvel. Ant-Man 3 was terrible, Secret Invasion was somehow worse, The Marvels was okay, and I never even bothered watching Loki Season 2. But re-watching Hulk in the year 2023 feels like a breath of fresh air. It doesn't have that stale corporate feel that a lot of modern MCU projects tend to have. It's a big budget movie from one of the big studios, but it feels like an indie movie. Ang Lee didn't have to 
to worry about fitting into an established universe. He got to make a movie that has its own distinctive style, has pretty good effects for the early 2000s, and tells a mature, deeply psychological story. It's a movie I learned to love over the course of making this video, and I can honestly say that, if you ask me, it's an underrated gem.